Hey guys, this is Mark Piller. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up development environment so you can build the application we developed for Android called Restaurant to Go. This is a sample app where we review the process of building an app using backendless and also demonstrate how to use various backendless APIs. What you will need to get your envi environment set up is uh, an installation of Android Studio and also an account with Backendless. The Android Studio is very easy to obtain if you were just to Google Android Studio and go to the download Android Studio link. Right here, here I'm running Mac, you can see that uh, you can just download the, the product. If you're running Windows or any other operating system, you will get the corresponding button. Once you obtain Android Studio, in order to get the Restaurant To Go app up and running, you will need to check it out from the version control. Restaurant To Go is checked in into our GitHub repository. And uh, as you can see, it is available right here. And in your Android Studio, just select Checkout Project from Version Control. Select Git. And you will need to enter the address of the restaurant to go repository. The, re the address of the repository, if you go to github.com slash backendless slash restaurant to go, right here in the clone URL, you can just copy that value from this box and paste it in this box. Then in the parent directory, this is going to be the folder that will contain your project just locate a folder on your hard drive that will be containing the actual restaurant to go application. So in this case, uh, I do have a folder called uh, dev in my home directory slash backendless slash my projects and my projects will contain the directory called restaurant to go. Select yes. And now we have everything that the project is made out of available in Android Studio. Before you go any further, it would be a good idea to verify that you can actually run the application and everything is working as expected out of the box. To do this, in Android Studio, there's going to be a drop-down where it shows a list of the run debug configurations. From here, select Order Success, uh, as this is going to be the final module that we will build and it includes all of the functionality of this application. And the reason we're selecting it now is just to make sure that we can run the entire app. Right next to this configuration, there is a play button. Click that. You will see that Android Studio is building the project. And then we'll prompt you to launch the project in an emulator. If you have an Android device, you can choose that. Or if, uh, if not, then use the emulator as I do have here in my setup. As you can see, my emulator is now running. I'm going to unlock it. And then the application is launched. So this is the very first screen of the app. You can go ahead and register using the register link. However, at this point, I do not recommend doing anything with the app for the reason that out of the box, it is configured to work with the backend that we use during the development. And that backend, even though it isn't backendless, would not be your backend. And in order to get this app running with your backend, what you would need to do is to create an account in Backendless. And this is what we're going to do next. To register with Backendless, uh, just uh, open the browser and go to develop.backendless.com. You will see the login screen. And uh, you can log in with Facebook or Twitter, assuming that you do not have an account. Uh, you can also you click the register button and uh, create an account. Uh, once you create an account, Backendless will send you a confirmation email with a link to confirm your email address. Click that link and you will be able to log in it to your uh, Backendless application. Since I already have a Backendless application, I'm going to log in now. There are a lot of apps in my account, but for this project, I'm going to create a new one by clicking the Create App button. And I will call it Restaurant 
to go app. The app is now created. It is brand new, brand new backend. If I click on the data icon, you can see there are no tables, there are no users. And the next thing that we're going to do in order to connect that project that you downloaded from GitHub with this backend is we need to populate the backend with data. I will show you how. And we also need to obtain application ID and Android secret key from this specific backend that you created and import these values, the application ID value, into the code. And the application ID is important because it is used by backend list to identify your specific backend. So let me show you how to obtain application ID first. In the in backend list console, cl uh, click the manage button. And the, and the screen that you will see contains a lot of different application settings. At the very top, you will see various IDs. The very first one is application ID. If you click the copy button, it is being copied to a clipboard and then switch back to Android Studio and open up order success since this is the module we're running. Go to Java, then there is one package uh, and go to utility. You will see backend settings class. In here, it will be pre-populated with application ID and secret key for the app that we use during the development, but we want to point it to your backend. Select this value and paste the value that you obtained from backend this console. You will need to repeat this process for, for the secret key. And the secret key for Android is right here. Click copy. It is copied to clipboard. So go back to Android Studio, select the secret key, and paste the value. So at this point, if we were to rerun the application, it will be communicating with your backend, uh, with your backend list backend. The next thing that will need to be done is to import all the data with all the restaurants and locations and menus into your backend. In Android Studio, right where you will see Android. Make sure to select Project from the drop-down menu. And in Project, there is going to be a folder called Data, and that folder contains a zip file. This zip file includes all the data that can be imported into Backendless. In fact, this zip file was created by an export procedure in Backendless. So we exported the data from our backend put it into GitHub and now you can import it into your own backend. In order to import it, switch back to console right here and under manage there is an import section. Click import and you will see a link to import single zip file which is exactly what we're doing. We're importing single zip file. You can import individual files for your data tables or geo points and so on but we will not be focusing on that now. So right now we just want to import a single zip file. Click this uh, hyperlink and then you will need to navigate to the directory that uh, contains your project from GitHub. And once you're there, select the zip file that I just showed to you. Click open. So at this point, all the data from that zip file is being imported by backend. This is the still tip. Uh, shows. Once it is, once the process is done, and it literally should take just a few seconds, you will receive an email uh, informing you that the import process is complete. But if you go to the data section, you will see that all the data that is included in the zip file is now imported and with all the links, with all the relations between the tables. So what I'm going to do next is uh, switch back to this emulator. In fact, we're going to shut down this app. And if I switch back to Android Studio, I'm just going to rerun my, uh, my project, uh, the order success, because this one includes the backend settings. Or in fact, I'm going to reuse this emulator. So now this app is pointing to your own backend. And uh, what I'm going to do is to register an account. 
All right, so now my account is registered and I should be able to log in. So as you can see, all the data is now populated from your own backend. If I click the Endless Suites restaurant, there is one location in Frisco. And from here, I can place an order for various products. So click Submit, and an order is being placed. Done. So this shows that you can run this application against your own backend. And uh, in fact, if I go back to console and uh, click on users, now here's me, Mark Pillar, uh, that basically confirms that the registration has gone through and uh, all the data is in place and you're, you're running this application against your own backend. In the next video, I'll be, we will start uh, going into individual screens and seeing how they're designed how they use back endless and uh, but with this video it should give you enough information to configure your own development environment thank you and i hope you will enjoy uh, building this application with us